Hello everybody, it's Dragana from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to do something a little bit different. It all started with this. Uh, these are the papers, actually the bigger papers that I normally put on my working desk to protect the surface. And they end up like this, having layers of paint and, and glue and things like that. So I cut them up. They were obviously much, much bigger. So I cut them up in four, so they're a little bit less than A4 size, and this is what they look like. So this is not a bad paper, it's quite good. It's a sketchbook paper, it can even be used for watercolors. And I feel bad throwing it just away. And I thought I want to make something cool with it rather than toss it in the bin. But since I'm doing a recycling project like this, I thought how about I show you how to do it with just basic supplies i would normally get my jelly plate out all the paints and fancy stencils and i do something cool with it but i understand that not everyone has all the supplies and the supplies can be really expensive so for this project you will need some recycled papers could be packaging cardstock anything you will also need some acrylic paints and this is the cheapest i could find just the school grade nothing fancy nothing special but it gives me quite a few different colors the rest we can uh, always mix you will need some um, gesso perhaps or uh, if you have some texture paste that's fine if you don't you don't have to have it you will need a palette i have this one but also i have a piece of this this is just acetate that came from packaging and cut it up into this square and just a foam or perhaps a um, mouse pad that you're not using just something uh, kind of to put it underneath that is soft and you can also put some white paper underneath I'll just do that quickly okay, just something white so that you can see the color better and I, I clip it to my desk like this so it doesn't move if you have a brayer or roller that would be great it will just save you a lot of time and if you do just get some scrap paper like this so that you can clean it on to that uh, also, you need some brushes, whatever you have. Get yourself some water in a jar and gloves if you want to protect your hands from the paint. If you don't care, like I normally don't, <laughs> but you know, you can do that as well. Now, I want to talk to you about stencils and about stamps that you can actually get around the house. Um, you can make yourself, basically, with recycled materials so no stencils no stamps that you buy just the ones that you can actually come up with by yourself because i'm going to use those now toilet paper rolls this is just three toilet paper rolls that are glued here and they would give you an interesting design here we have eight toilet paper rolls i've been using it to make these big flowers like that and i love it almost looks like star eyes doesn't it <laughs> i wish they were smaller so toilet paper rolls a great resource for stamps now here this is from masking tape or tape. this as well various lids you see this and then you have this that's from the, from the glue uh forks cutlery now this is from a um, perfume i think look at that that i haven't tried this one i just found it yesterday <laughs> i raided my husband's uh, toiletries and i found this i think it would make perfect stamp this is a lid from a roll-on uh, not the roll-on the, the deodorant you know uh, i tried this yesterday it's perfect uh various lids and shapes so look through your stuff and see what you have that has interesting design uh this is going to be more like a abstract kind of design we're gonna come up but it's really cool this is from a lip gloss i think yeah and this also has interesting uh texture on the back so you can use these things to be the stamps you don't have to go and buy it and this is going to be authentic you you know you can't buy these things now, now this here look ashtray it has these interesting shape now this whatever that is 
piece of pipe if you put the paint it will give you some sort of design i'm not going to use all of these i'm giving you ideas of what you can use if you don't have stamps or stencils and even if you do like i do have stamps and stencils but i still love using unexpected materials that you can't buy stencils and stamps for that you can you see what i mean this is just a piece of cardboard another uh, roll of paper now this corrugated cardboard it gives a beautiful um trim this is for i think cake decoration now this came from a lid from a cake like i just had to keep it because it gives me that nice it's a stencil basically this is from a food packaging as well i think it's cream cheese or something again when i bought my boots this is what came inside to hold the shape i think look at that really beautiful shapes this is a tag of some sort fruit picker with cotton basket but look at that it's like a like a drop or, or sort of a really cool looking leaf various uh, clothing tags even this this as well now here i used my punch and i put it through the paper later on i tried it on this this is a uh, file folder dividers or something here it is i used scissors that i had and i just cut with different scissors this is zigzag these ones and i think they these borders would look really cool now, even this this was already on that file folder the uh, divider can use that i use the heart shape punch star shape punch circular one and this is just when you tear off the papers sometimes you're left with these strips okay again this is from a strawberry basket i think i just cut the the thing that's around and i want to try that as well to see what sort of design is going to give me okay so that is that so a lot of things you can do with stuff around the house. Have a look at this. This is just a box of some sort with uh, these elastic bands that I just wrapped around. And it gives me really nice texture. This is anti-slip, I think. You use these in the bathroom to put in your bathtub so you don't slip. And I tried it obviously yesterday because it's dirty. <laughs> it's really cool. This is again another anti-slip uh, thing uh, you, you normally have in your car to put your phone or something so it doesn't. But look at the texture. I want to try that. Then obviously bubble wrap. I used my uh, one inch punch on this piece of acetate and um, toy, uh, pills. This is for, I think you put this underneath your chairs and tables so to stop them from slipping. They are sticky but i left them on that and i use this side as a stamp these are all from food packaging uh, you know you buy when you buy cakes things like that they sometimes come in these plastic containers and some of them have really cool designs on the bottom have a look at that one i haven't tried this one yet but i want to i haven't tried that one i want to try try this one it's cool that one as well and that so again a lot of options this is an old curtain that i found and uh, i'm not using it so it's a great uh, stencil potato sack when you buy garlic it comes in sometimes in these bags and it's a really fine mesh now lemons and oranges come in these sometimes okay this is a construction material but it's it's great it's a leftover i think it's used on walls but i found a piece lying around and i've been using it as a stencil some of these you might use these uh, for your coffee dyeing uh, process and i obviously used it when i was dyeing with coffee or rust but they're plastic they're durable and they're perfect as a stencil as well and of course egg cartons i mean you can see i used it <laughs> egg cartons 
can be used as well. So I tried to give you as many examples as I could, but you know, it's going to depend on, on what you have lying around in your house. If you have proper stamps and stencils, yeah, use them. I do normally, but this is something different. This video is for those of you who want to experiment and expand your creativity. So look at the stuff around you and then you'll see shapes and then you'll see textures. Um, I don't know if you remember the song from quite a few years ago. It says, love is all around me. I can say art is all around me. Everywhere I go, <laughs> everywhere I look, I see things that can be used in my art projects. Okay, let's get started looking through the papers and they're more or less you know like this one's quite terrible but it can be fixed so i think i want to start with that one it's the worst looking one let's just start with that one and i uh, will put something underneath something like this and i want to use one of my stencils like this one to give it a little bit of texture because i plan to use these papers in my journals either as toppers, as pages, to cut into shapes or, or index cards, whatever, you know. And I'm going to use this. This is a clothing tag. It's quite thick cardstock. I'm going to use it to apply texture paste. Or you can just do just so. Just fine. But I'm going to use this one because I have it. I'm going to use this to get that out. I also use it to spread but I think it just spreads better when you have a surface like this so I'm going to hold it and I'm going to just try that and I'm gonna get some more so you don't have to have a lot of fancy stuff create art I think I'm going to cover most of it but not all of it like this. the paper is quite thick you can take it just a little bit more down there I love it already okay i'm going to put that one aside to dry and i'm going to work on the other pages because we're going to do more work on this one maybe something like this just a little bit in some areas the hoping already love it okay so if you want to use that again for something like this i advise put this in the water straight away that's what i'm going to do i think that looks cool those two so i will leave them to dry and we'll work on the other pages this one's pretty bad as well 
So let's see what sort of colors we have here. Violet. Okay. I will go for dark color because I plan to do something lighter color on top. And mixing purple or violet in this case and orangey red together it gives me a really nice dark color that I like. Okay, I will use my palette knife to mix, but you can use anything, you can use the brush as well. Okay, this violet color is not dark enough, so I'm going to add a little bit more. And don't be afraid to mix colors. Good, but I think I want a little bit of blue in there. Oh, that's a light blue. And I have a dark blue in here. Never mind. It's okay. Right. Now you can also apply color with your knife like this. If you have a palette knife. You don't even have to use the brush or a brayer. You can just do this. In fact, let's just do that. Covered that and this is our base so we're going to add fine detail on top once this is dry so I'll put that on the side as well it's just a bit of ink on this side and here we have a bit of color so maybe well, let's do one that's just oh, I don't know let's do a light one and then we can do dark detail on top so for that I'll just take this white because the page is already white and maybe can do like a lighter color oh, I like this Let's see what it's like these are like the cheapest acrylic paints I could find this is like school grade I'm just going to mix this Now this is a bit darker than I wanted it, so I'll just add a bit more white. And I want a little bit more of this. Blue turquoise or something. So let's try it with this. Oh, I love it. Just cleaning the roller here. And I'm going to this one up. I'll put that one aside to dry as well. Once I, I've sort of tried painting really thick paint on top of the paper with this and I ended up with a lot of um, kind of bumps and, and, and the texture and I really love the effect. So I'm going to use just the gesso for this and I'll just grab a little bit and I'm just going to Spread like this in some areas. Just like that. I'm going to use this same roller. You see what I mean? It just gives me this uh, really cool texture. But you have 
to hold the paper. Here we go. That's a perfect texture. Without stencils. Without texture paint. Even. Look at that. I love it. Okay. Hope you can see that. It's almost like a crackle uh, paste. Beautiful. I'll put that one aside as well. Okay. This one. I think I'm going to use this side then. There's still a little bit of this paint there, so I'm just going to try something different. I'm going to spray this paper with water. I'm going to pick up that color. In fact, I'm going to do this. As a final step, I will mix just white. I'm going to spread it on my palette like this. And I'm going to get bubble wrap. Okay. even picked up some of that purple I had there already. gold but I'm just going to apply it like this so when you do paint with the roller it's really fast and I find it works best if you just do like this and like that if you start doing this and then you just I don't know I stick to the up and down and left and right movement and I like the results. Okay. And then you can also go in a, once this is dry, you do the same but in a different color. But I'm going to leave it like that for now. There's one more uh, piece of paper left, I had eight, and I'm going to do this one with red, maybe red and purple. I 
let all of them dry and then we'll be back to complete them. Okay, these are dry. This one as well. And let's do something on this one first. I feel most inspired to do this. So um I think with this white textured paste something like this would look good this is a gold paint that's underneath from before but i don't have a, a gold acrylic paint here i have a yellow ochre which is quite similar but without the shine and maybe i can add a bit of orange oh this is red and what's this burnt sienna I could have mixed these in the palette here, but I just, I'm so used to working from the flat palette that I always forget. I'll just grab my uh, brush and I'll have some water here. And I'm going to just apply the paint of water down first. And maybe I will spray this with a bit of water as well. This is, can be also done if you have some spray inks. But like I said, this video is going to be about working with your basic supplies. And the least expensive. Okay, so I'll just... Doing this, adding quite a bit of water. do this you can let it I think it looks really cool even that bit of green there it looks really great you now this needs to dry really well now we have this maybe I can do that just collect it up to the next page. Why not? It's a nice color. Just mop it up like that. So like that. And And the rest of just up. now here I'd like to add some darker colors in between those so I'm thinking what do I have here red in this brown Even some black.
then I'm going to just spray it. I'm going to let it drip down. Really interesting. Let's work on this one because we have <coughs> some dark color here. That means what we're going to do on top, we can do with that dark. So either this one or that one. But I think uh, I think I want to work on this one. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to just do this. With the paint that's left, I'm just going to spread it like this so that I can use it for my stamps. And let's start with this one anti slick furniture. can do some stencil work on this one and for that I'm going to use this sponge now oh, let's try some of these maybe we could do like just borders here so green and brown has that kind of like earthy color very nice Maybe we can do the same on this side. And we have this circle. This is from a cake. Let's put that in the middle. would be perfect yeah we'll go a little bit over the let's do that one to get this brush that came with these paints to a really thin one.
I gave it a kind of um, structure and then with this you give it flair. <laughs> this looks really cool. And we can even do something in the middle, but we'll do that later. Now I want to use the same color that I used there, maybe on this here, perhaps these circles. going to be a page in a journal like that wow it's so, so pretty i really really love it i wouldn't do anything else to it i think it's kind of really earthy and pretty uh, like that i wouldn't do anything else to it going back to this one because we only had one color here and it looks a little bit i don't know it still needs something and i thought how about if i use this curtain just put it like that just in some areas okay I wouldn't do much more to it I think it works really well just like that in three colors okay since I have some of that color left I want to do something with one of the first few that we've done now this is still not dry it's very wet but because I have this color I think it would look good if I just add a little bit just on the gently over the the white area and um, I'm just brushing it lightly over I don't want it to go deep between the grooves I want that dark I just want it like this just the white That's oh, that looks much better with that yellow color doesn't it now we have this one. We've done that just with gesso. And here again, I just want to do this. Something that is going to bring that texture up. So maybe we can have a few colors here. Maybe two. What would look good with this? Yellow, should we go with the blue again? To let it dry like this vertically okay here's that one so because we have a darker background i want to do some really light colors on top so i'm using just some white 
again a touch of yellow ochre and going to use a little bit of this crimson red because I want that a really warm pink kind of thing but I'm going to need more white Let's use this one again. I think it needs third color a bit lighter than this perhaps with a bit more yellow and just to make it pop <laughs> Need to mix that darker red color for this flower center. Oh, this is never going to end. That's it for this one. I love that flower there. Even the small ones are interesting too, but it's a really cool page. And the lucky last, the red one. Hoping that is going to give it a little bit of more. So this here is red, violet and black. It gives a really nice dark grey. And let's do this. We haven't tried this one. This is just uh, elastic strings. Let's do
cool now we need some lighter color lots of white i do like a really light pink let's see i'll add a little bit of yellow to it just to make it a touch warmer spread that we can either go again with this one in lighter color to create almost like a, a weave but i really want to try this i haven't tried this one Just go around. love this one. Oh, who thought it was going to turn out this cute? I really love these leaves. Okay, I'll just clean up all this mess and then we can go through all of them and see which one we like best. Oh, it took me a while to clean up. I've made such a mess of my desk. Anyway, the prints are all dry and flattened. I scanned them in and I want to do something with them. I don't know yet if it's going to be digital or not. But for now, I just want to show you uh, what they look like. This one, I absolutely love. I just, I don't know. It's, it's really good. And this one as well. I love it. It just looks really nice. My husband says uh, this one looks really 80s. <laughs> I don't know what do you, what do you think? I kind of like it. It's a uh, very um, almost like steampunk. I don't know. And this one will definitely go into my nature journal, the big one. I love it. I love it. I love this page. And these two with the texture paste are just so gorgeous as well. That's going to be a really beautiful page as well. I love it. I love the texture and the richness of it. And the color is really nice as well. And this one is also very cool. It would be a nice background for like to do like an image on top. Add just a focal image and it would look really cool. A little bit of grungy, a little bit arty, but I really like it. Now... We didn't get enough time to complete this one because it was drying, but I hope you can see the texture. It's a nice 
background page to put something on top and I would use it probably in a nautical journal because of the color so really really uh, nice watery like greens and, and a bit of that sandy color I love it as well and this one was the quickest one we've done and it turned out really cool as well really cool page and add something or maybe even lace here or something I don't know I just I can't wait to use these pages in my journals okay so I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it inspirational let me know what you think in the comments below until next time bye